What's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Permanite Bounty BS with me and the nerds here. Um, on our uh, second part of season two of the Clone Wars. I hope everybody's had a good weekend and a, and a good past week here. Glad to be back with everybody. Uh, just starting off things real quick, DP. Uh, how you feeling, man? What's going on? Oh, everything's good. How you doing? Good, good, man. What about you? Oh, Rick? man, everything's awesome over here. Great. And you, can Everything is awesome. <laughs> Everything's great with me. Got my first Ooh. shot. Good man, that's great. Bang, 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 bang. Four weeks I have my one, and I'll have COVID live in my bloodstream. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, <Not> live. Right? <laughs> that's great. That's great, guys. Well, um, just as always, you know, appreciate everybody tuning in to us. So welcome to be we're glad to be back with you guys. And uh, before we get into this, let's get DP. Let you know where you guys can find us at. Nerdcyclopedia.com, people, make sure that you are going on to our website. You will find all our links to your um, our favorite social media post, um, Twitter, um, Facebook, and also on Instagram, at Nerdcyclopedia. Make sure that you are leaving us some feedback, nerds at Nerdcyclopedia.com. We love getting your feedback. Also, making sure that if you are on Facebook, we do have a Facebook group called Carbonite Bounty BS, the Star Wars group. OK, uh, we have like different types of, you know, posts and stuff on there, memes and all types of different things that we talk about, about as far as Star Wars. Also, if you're listening to the podcast, make sure that you are subscribing and downloading it from your favorite podcast outlets like iHeartRadio, Spotify, um, also um, uh, Stitcher, uh, Apple Podcasts, anywhere that you listen to your favorite podcast, we are there. And if you are watching us on YouTube, make sure you hit that subscribe button, also the notification. So anytime that we're on, you know that we're on. Appreciate that, guys. And um, you know, before we sink our teeth into the um, kind of our overview, uh, we'll start with we'll go opposite. We'll start with hits today. What were your initial thoughts of the second grouping of season two? Man? I mean, this this second group of season two is just it's another step forward for this series. Um, we get a great advancement of the Obi Wan Kenobi General Grievous plot line. We get a existential question about who the clones really are. Can they be somebody else? And we get the MF Darksaber shows up. Yes. Yes. So between all of that and a literal general spider, <laughs> this little segment of episodes had everything I was looking for. I really enjoyed it. What about you, uh, Ken? Same. A lot of, lot, of, lot of surprises, more character development, more angry mm. Anakin, plus excellent pilot. I mean, that kid can pilot a starship through pea soup <laughs> with his eyes gouged out. I mean, real excellent skills as far as that goes. General Spider, also very cool. And uh, assassin droids, bring them on. And what about you, DP? Uh, as as far as um, you know, these batch of episodes, I thought they were pretty good. Like Hitch said, it's a step up. I mean, as each episode goes on, we're getting better animation, we're getting better character development, we're, we're getting better stories. I mean, not the stories that were you know um, they were okay in the beginning, but they're just starting to get more intricate and a lot more um, you know um, in depth and everything. I love like the Mandalore you know plot. We finally yeah. get into like the Mandalore stuff, so I was excited. I was super excited because I'm I'm all about the Mandalorian now. You know, I've got indoctrinated <laughs> through like the Mandalorian. So to see it, you know, in uh, in these batch of episodes was really great. So um, I was really feeling these. Yeah, and me, me as well. I mean, like I said, I, I like a lot of the lure stuff. And it's just, you know, it's it's kind of me, like it's my own ignorance, I guess. And it's kind of like with Hitch and even Ken. When I seen this stuff come out, I just like threw it to the side, like it's a corny cartoon. Like to come back and watch this again and even see this more, it's just so in-depth. I mean, like the development, the stories. I mean, and we talk about the Mandalorian episodes. These are like 20, some of these are 22, 18 minutes and I felt like, uh, you know, it's just craving for more. It's just like yeah. this, you know, that lust that, you know, they put on you. It's just, it's great storytelling. Um, 
from a cartoon. I think like uh, even Ken alluded to before, even with sh- children and adults, it's enough to like keep your attention, but enough for you to not fade out. I think they do a good job of even some of those scenes where it seems to get a little long in the tooth in the episode. It kind of switches to some action and, and keeps you engaged. So it's a good watch for a whole family. I mean, I, I really enjoy it. It's yeah, a, it's my, a, my six year old with me and watches it pretty yes. much all the way through. So yeah. that's. I can't get him to do anything else, but he sits for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, as I mean, as Ken is saying, I mean, I have my um, you know, eight year old sitting there watching it with me, and he watches it the whole way through as well. Um, it's it's complex enough to keep an adult, you know, into it, and right. you know, cartoony, you know, if you want to call it that, um, mm-hmm. enough to keep you know the um the 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 child engaged. So. It's a happy medium between the two, and it doesn't condescend. So that's the great thing about these episodes. They do not condescend and dumb down to the point where um, you're, you're okay. Well, I'm just watching like a children's cartoon. So right. definitely appreciating this. What you know, about something you? Do the characters, like develop character development. Every time one of these clones die now, I feel bad. <laughs> every single time i'm like i don't even know who that guy was i feel bad <laughs> like, like literally i'm like it, 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 that, he falls out i'm like oh, man that was ralph you, Damn it. you you know he had a backstory you know he might have had a family you know Some something sort of was tattoo. going on with he that had a face tattoo e- exactly you know or, with that guy maybe- Maybe he was going to have a family. Ooh, like, maybe he was going to have a family. Like, like the deserter. Maybe he was a family, and now he's nothing. He's bug squat. What a, what a great place <laughs> to start when we talk about like the the metaphysics, since the identity metaphysics is all in vogue this week. <laughs> let's talk about right. the identity metaphysics of these clones, and yeah, let's talk about you know, um, let's talk about the deserter. Let's talk about what what this signifies for for. Great for, for Captain Great Rex. Episode. One of the this is this is really excellent. It's what we pulled our thumbnail from this week, and uh, I really just love this idea that there's an alternate universe where killing isn't the only thing these guys are capable of. Where they're capable of having a family and raising a family in a very very short amount of time. By the way, because we're only like what a year or two years from Geonosis, so <laughs> those kids sprouted up pretty quick. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, we can we can appreciate the questions these, that these clones are asking themselves because we understand they're three-dimensional. It doesn't have to be explained to us that this guy's an exception. He really kind of isn't. They all have the same pull, but he yeah. would like got into this unique circumstance where he could make the run and he did it. And it worked out for the most part. Yeah, I mean, he made like a existent, you know, existential choice. I mean, it was the 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 thing of choice um of being, you know, with like the clone army or, you know, going off on his own and you know, thus deserting the um, you know, the party and everything. Um, Rex calls him out on that, but also the um, uh, is it, it, his name Kicks? Um, what what is the deserter's name? <laughs> I think we said his name was Kicks. We found okay, yeah. Kicks. Okay, all right. So Kicks. All right. So um, you know, he he started a family and um, Rex challenges him on the choice that he made, deserting the army and everything. Um, and but at first Rex looks at him as a deserter, but as he gets um heals up with the family and um and it's a really great scene where the kids really you know bring him in they sort of like you know they looked at him and see okay well he looks like my dad and everything but we know that 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 is that that wasn't his dad but um the deserter asked you know kicks ass on rex you know if he wants to eat dinner you know with the family and everything and the kids is like yes 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 they can't wait they can't wait really great scene of putting them both on a you know grounded you know human type level and sort of bringing Rex down to you know to, to the point where okay he has to actually have you know dinner with his you know with the with the deserted family, um, and it, it, it was just a really great scene. Yeah, I mean, I second that as well. I kind of like the development we still see even more like the humanity element of these clones because when you think about it, I mean, you know, I guess. And Ken's alluded to this a lot, even with the man, with the uh, Mandalorian. Like, it's like it, they get lost somewhere. You know, they go from these clones that are basically a clone of an elite warrior, a, you know, kind of like an army ranger of a person, bounty hunter, um, to a period to where they were, you know, kind of robots, mm-hmm. and then they come back to being 
we don't know if they're for sensitive children or what that I mean obviously Fannin will get in this later but um you know there's theories that you know these palpatine these force sensitives that they the dark side have captured are you know stormtroopers or are they just kids stolen from their family so it's an interesting mix but I, like you're saying it, it's really humanizes the characters i really like how they did that with this it, it, uh, and if you think about someone who's in the military now like modern just regular military yeah, right. they go through this yeah. right yeah a lot men of it, and yeah. women go through they learn they learn a procedure they learn a process they learn a way to do things and it conflicts a lot i mean a lot of the, what the military teaches conflicts to what you normally would want to do like right. you don't normally want to go fight somebody that's not a normal decision right, right doing this over and over and over and again that's just an example but some people are able to deal with it some people can't and it's interesting the different levels that they're giving to all these clones because each one of them is dealing with it in a different way right this guy this guy says he's I, I i'm out i'm out i want to i've heard about this family idea and i want to do that and i want to how as a clone do you even make that choice what they they weren't born they weren't actually born to like you know a man you know a, a female they weren't given birth and everything they didn't right. have any type of childhood or whatever but for um for this deserter to make that choice to actually start a family i mean that's that's some really deep stuff right there so so what was it what was the thing that happened was mm -hmm. it a village that they destroyed or protected maybe they saw a family unit maybe right. they saw something maybe that soldier saw something and said i want that yeah and the way i'm going to get that is if i leave this well what right. and so he he bailed and how healthy he was his hair was growing I'm good he, mm. he had a nice complexion <laughs> he had a personality i mean he was like animated he was funny um social yeah, yeah. you know definitely not very really charming yeah very charming right. very charming so it, it, it's very it's it, it's it's interesting and, t, and mitch you, you you're right you're right 100 percent. like these these are different levels of how people deal with like military and decisions and being told what to do and sometimes people crack but i'd be curious to see what happened to this guy that made him crack and just fail one thing that i'm very interested in is that the clones are created and they have this growth acceleration, but the thing that they don't have that, that, you know, you or I would hope to have, uh, you know, if we went into the army is a future, <laughs> they have this shorter lifespan. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that anchors them to their organization is that there is no other option for them because they're not going to last that long. Um, you know, right. when we want, look, think about the end of saving private Ryan, right? Uh, you know, Tom Hanks tells him to earn this. And next thing you know, he's, you know, it's 60 years later. And he's reflecting on his life. The clones don't really have that perspective. It'll never happen to them. They won't live that long. And so it's interesting that, you know, we, we've talked before in our reviews for this series about how, you know, they've succeeded for us in making the clones three-dimensional characters. This gives us the fourth dimension. This tells us that, yes, there is another option for these clones. Yes, that retirement could settle with them. And so choosing to stay in if they had a choice is something they could go in opposite direction even though they are like we know not just bred but manufactured for this life of warfare right and i, I mean that's an interesting tie-in also to when we get uh you know that new series the bad mm -hmm. batch you know it seems like it's a uh you know, and, and they never really alluded to this, but, you know, uh, when they were manufacturing these clones, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, when they were doing the tests and you I, and you saw that in the uh, latest um, uh, sequel trilogy that they would run certain scans, you'd have to pass certain tests, whatever clones or stormtroopers made it would make the grade. So, uh, I mean, I oh, guess the, yeah. the, the, the yeah. humane thing is they didn't kill them off, so to speak. They allowed them to you know, serve and they would, you know, choose like this one with their free will to either leave or, or continue going. So, I mean, it, it's really, like I said, it develops and the, the crazy thing about these episodes and even the series is it just ties so much more together, together and it, it allows you to really appreciate, you know, watching these episodes even now makes me appreciate even the, the latest sequel a little more and some of the details that I, you know, might've missed because of just how, you know, the, you know, the continuity, continuity of this whole 
Star Wars kind of, you know, universe is. I mean, it's it's wild. It, it, it truly is. I love how um, at the end of that particular episode, Rex, you know, um, it's a trope, you know, um, he he looks at, you know, kicks and decides that he's not going to turn him in. You know, he could, but he decides, OK, he he has a beautiful family and, you know, this that's something that, you know, he might want to have one day or, you know, what he longs for or whatever. But, you know, he's real dedicated to being you know, a captain and everything. I love the way that that episode ended off where, you know, he went off and was like, you know, you just do you, you know, you just, you know, be with your family because that's, that's what's, that's you, you know, you made that choice and everything. I have to respect that. I had, I made my choice to stick with this. And um, I mean, that episode to me was just so much about choice and I, you don't really see that in cartoons, <laughs> you know, you don't really see that in like a lot of, you know, animated stuff. So I was really appreciative of that. Because there's no retirement program, right? <laughs> they just die. <laughs> <laughs> like the droids, you know, what retirement program do the droids have, right? It's General Grievous eventually yeah, getting well, annoyed with them, right? <laughs> That's it. They're, 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 <laughs> Rex is now seeing that, hey, that there's something else, you know? So maybe he wants to try and yeah. yes. boat himself toward that. Because really, it's like you're a clone, you get the armor, you complete missions, and if you die, that's the end of your right. story. There's no, I'm going to work for five years and then, and then I'm going to be, you know, that's. <laughs> yeah, there's no Republic GI plan, right? They're not going to be coming. So that brings up a really good, that, that brings up a really good point. Like what keeps these clones going? I mean, I mean, this, this clone did this. I mean, what, what makes a clone decide to, um, you know, go that route. I mean, we talked about it before, but, but what makes what the other clones like, oh, I'd be so interested to see and i hope you know t mitch you know we we are going to see other aspects of you know the lives of other clones but right. it'd be really interested to see the choices that some of these clones make yeah the, you'll see you'll see interaction with the clones up until the end believe it or not so they they are involved but uh it's just it's like one of those things like i was thinking maybe that uh like we saw in the last you know the latest sequel trilogy that there's something they can test in their brain kind of like like aggression you know with humans if you're aggressive enough to, you know, a lot of kids, when they want to play football, you look at the kid that says, oh, you can tell he's a football player. He's aggressive. There's a lot of kids who play that don't have it. Maybe they yeah. do that with these clones, you know, when they're in, you know, battle. This person's aggressive. This person wants to pull the trigger. I mean, they found that out with Finn within, you know, what, five minutes of the light, the latest, you know, you know sequel trilogy. So maybe that's <laughs> something they do a little more in depth with these with these clones, but it, it, it's it's great to see that they have free will and they're not just shooting blasters and, and getting sh one well, shot. What does that say yeah. about the, I yeah. mean, it's so yeah. interesting that we're yeah. building yeah. these guys up as decision makers and as, as actors and as having free will and as saying that they can say no to things and they can run and they can, they can do other than what they're ordered when we know how this all ends. We know how it ends and them building up this idea that these guys have choice is, is such an interesting narrative thing for them to do it when you're thinking about the story as one continuity, right? When you're not thinking about it as yeah. a release order. Because in release order... It's a tragedy. Yes, exactly, DP. It is a tragedy this way. It's a tragedy. Because they're, they're lying to us. They're, they're foreshadowing here that what is going to happen mm -hmm. is this order is going to come down mm -hmm. and these clones are going to go, hell no, we're not going to do that, right? That is what they are. They're heavy putting their putting a lot of weight on that, in my opinion, that essentially we should expect the clones to do the right thing because they can think for themselves, which is, I think, is one of the things that is pitched in episode two is being yeah. superior versus droids. So it's ex expected. Right. Yeah. So I, I'm thinking to myself now, wow, they are really playing up the fact that these guys can choose. These guys can, you know, do other than what they're told. And so it, it, it's it's it's. It's very interesting to think of this as sort of a, a, a rope -a dope you know what I mean? <laughs> for for all of us, it's so neat. <laughs> well, we know we're going to end up having the Anakin tragedy and everything, but this adds just that extra layer that we got something else to, to, to hang our hats on too, following these clones in their story and everything. Thus, the Clone Wars. It's it's it's, it's a bit more layered than what I what the title lends itself to be. Right. You know, yeah, another another episode I really liked was the the Mandalore plot. I mean, that's you know, it, it, oh, it, it put it, it, yes. I mean, 
it put a total new spin on your thought of the Mandalorian. And I mean, it's just, it puts another spin on how they viewed, you know, death watch or as, as they're known as also the children of the watch, um, which is, would be Din Djarin, the people who rescued him. I mean, it's interesting how some of them call them terrorists and, you know, they're more of the, they consider themselves traditional Mandalorians as to the newer Mandalorians with Sabine and everybody would be, I guess, your, your, your newest, your later generation, your millennial version of, of the Mandalorian. But uh, it's weird because you have, you know, like we talked about before, different factions within a, a creed that kind of, you know, one overrules another. So it's, I, I really like that episode, you know, as far as that and, you know, just the whole, the kind of seeds of Mandalore. Yeah. And that was the first time I've ever seen anything about Mandalorians outside of Boba Fett. And they seem very uh, elitist, like, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, yeah. you know, real uppity, very sophisticated, very, you know, by the book, very bougie. You know, they would mm-hmm. always look for the, they, they were very materialistic. I mean, it seemed, I mean, they're very, uh, uh, you know, loyal to their people, but, you know, I think they, they really had, a, they were very into material goods and, and the, you know, the good life and, and drinking and money and, you know, it, which wasn't, what I thought they would be, I thought they would be more like Boba Fett, like scavengers, you know, uh, living off the land and solo, you know, just living alone, but it was a completely different vibe. I was a little, it looked like Coruscant, right? Mandalore. Right. Like yeah. Coruscant. Yeah. The yeah. Real yeah. Industrial and very Republic and, um, you know, like, I don't know. And she, the Duchess, I mean, she was, she was legit. Like you could tell she could fight. Like you definitely saw yeah. that she yeah. fight in her, but she, I mean, she didn't need me need much protection no. from, um, um obi you know with obi-wan okay. but she she got it <laughs> oh oh yeah and uh when they took what was the uh what was the adversary's name what the hell was his name the anakin comes up runs him through <laughs> um what was his name the one that was uh he was trying to steal the uh, I, gotta, I gotta think i forgot and anakin bit. with the lightsaber Obi-Wan's like no we needed his information just can't kill people and <laughs> anakin's like <laughs> Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That was a great foreshadow, though, because they, they, um, they, I mean, they, they both decided, okay, we wasn't going to try to kill, but Anakin made the decision. Okay, what are you guys doing? Let's just, you know, <laughs> I love that. I love that part about that that you know particular scene. <laughs> yeah, it was great. It's a good moment. It was a good Anakin anger moment, you know. And I, I, I see those now. Yeah, yeah. I really like. That. It, it, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I I really like those two. Like you were saying, even with the, the Anakin kind of um, the aggression, you know. And then we we obviously get to see, uh, you know, Bo Katan kind of her her, I guess, because I believe that's her that's her mother. So, um, is that her mother? Wow. Okay, I think it is. I, I don't I don't one hundred percent. Somebody that. might have to fact check me on that, but. I'm pretty sure Satina's Okatan because she her last name is the uh, whatever the Krizi yeah. as well. So no, it's so okay. interesting to see Mandalore yeah. be like to, to to find out that Boba Fett and that Din are like this offshoot of the real culture. You know what I mean? Like when you say like right. it would be like if if we said you know New York City and what everybody thinks about is Broadway, right? But we're actually talking about Bernigets. <laughs> you know what I mean? We're actually right. talking about you know. Uh, some subway vigilante. It's just like totally different, right? But they're from the same place. Uh, it, it's so interesting to see that what our expectation has been of these guys for so long is wrong, right? Just straight up wrong. We just are wrong about what they do and what they are. So uh, that it's it's interesting to see those expectations be upended, and uh, this idea that you know we're leading into sanitary like Senate murder intrigue. We're bringing like the political end of the Clone Wars sort of into the mix here. Uh, by bringing in Mandalore, it's so it's very ingenious because it lets us kind of see some characters that we're familiar with, like Bail Organa and like Padme, and see the machinations of how they went from yeah yeah. You know, how do we get to the yeah. point where Palpatine could grab control all, all of a sudden? You know, in three years. So it's interesting to see some of that as a you know as a guy who's into political science and certain unofficial capacity. I like that stuff. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. We we also have to keep in mind, like Ken was, was saying, super, you know, I was. 
No, I mean, I was about to say, I was super excited to see the dark saber. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> I was like, I know that, you know. Yeah. But no, when Ken was saying, you know, as far seeing, as seeing the, that, uh, no, we what Ken was saying ahead. as far as the um, the culture wise, we have to remember that they were so bougie and so expensive because this one best car was highly available to them, and that was a very uh, very expensive commodity. So when they had had the next siege of Mandalore. And lost best car. That's when you see the Mandalorian and them being broke, and they having such a anger towards anybody outside of a Mandalorian having best car because their planet was basically sieged and gutted. So it, it basically like people still in vibranium from Wakanda and none of it being left. Okay, it makes sense. <laughs> I was just thinking about vibranium like the whole time you're talking. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, and, and it's it's funny how these are all these stories like Wakanda and Disney and. Marvel, how they're kind of parallel. It's it's interesting when you tie things together. How they how they show how the showrunners run these shows. Well, nerds are the same no matter well, what. Both universes and right. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Nerds are the same. <laughs> We're just easy, you know. Just kidding. We're terrible. Right. Everybody knows that about yeah. us. It's awesome to to run into like these prequel. I, I like I like that I already know what these episodes are prequels to, right? So I already know these all the clone episodes are setting up episode three. I already know this is all. You know, setting up stuff for the Mandalorian. This in Ahsoka's episode where she lost her lightsaber, right? Is setting up more excitement to see them pop up in the continuity later when we get to that that point, yeah. right? When we get to the actual watch continuity between uh, six and you know whatever's after six anymore, <laughs> which is still up for grabs. So I love I love that we're what uh, we're what like thirty seven years after episode six, and and whatever happens after episode six is still it depends on who you ask, right? <laughs> I think that's great. Right. As of now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, by the time a Soga series comes out, I mean, we're going to have like a whole, um, you know, backstory and everything knowing about mm-hmm. her. So, I mean, that's just going to be just, just a, you know, refreshing it. And she is grown up at that point, you know. So she has a whole history and maturity, you know, um, in her now, you know, as we see her immaturity, you know, growing right now. I mean, she's, you know, with Anakin and everything, you know, learning this and that and learning some things that she probably shouldn't be learning. But we see that level of maturity by the time she gets to the Mandalorian. I mean, she's a whole different face, you know, but just, you know, has still elements of the same. Yeah, right. be a, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. And the play on what you're talking about, the lightsaber, that's like my one gripe with the Star Wars stuff. I like how they like, I mean, because, you know, when you see the movies, it was like a big deal. Even with Anakin, if you lose your lightsaber, it's like a big deal. Like, it's huge. You're not supposed to use your lightsaber. But I'd like to see that one episode, though, when they talk about it. Like, you go to Ilum and you see a young Jedi, you know, youngling getting a crystal, bonding with it, and building their lightsaber. That's, I mean, they do it on the, if you've played that new video game, um, and I have it, I forget the name, but um, the one with Cal Kestis, it It kind of shows you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it shows you, it kind of shows you that when you go to Ilum yep. and, you know, you kind of build a lightsaber. So he has a similar story, but I'd just like to see an episode on kind of like a youngling's journey to becoming a Jedi, so to speak, or even a, a Jedi Padawan from a youngling that's just getting your crystal, forging your way in the Force. That's, that's like the one thing I miss in, in all these series. Is, even this one, I, you know, when they talked about Ahsoka, it would have been nice to get a little bit more further backstory of her as she went from a youngling to a Padawan under Anakin. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we never really see obi-wan or anakin kind of get their lightsaber right it oh. never really happens but they both lost them <laughs> through through everything through the whole through the whole series i mean it anakin lost his obi-wan grabbed it put it on the seat of the speeder and he said <laughs> i mean he said don't lose this right so there's some importance in there but i think you have to get to a certain level in your training before it really matters I think Asuka is mm-hmm. not quite there yet. She's still learning. So he's not going to put a whole, he's going to, you know, make sure she knows that that was bad, but I don't think it's a, it's a real big point yet. Right. Until you reach a certain level of training. But then you can lose your lightsaber all the time. Like you said, I mean, wasn't finding uh, Anakin's original lightsaber a plot point in episode seven that they never tied into anything else. Right. It was just up. Oh, we just had it. Nothing. People lose lightsabers all the time. Anakin's lightsaber was held by Obi-Wan for a long time, you know? I mean, 
It happens, right? Technically speaking, did, did Luke lose his lightsaber in, inside R2-D2 before Episode Six started? I, you could make an argument there. Maybe he just misplaced it while they were going from place to place. Who knows? But he did it. He, I think he well, did it, I, though, right? Hey, hey, we can't. I'm not hey, going to talk strategy hey, hey, hey. After, after a Jedi Master. I mean. well, uh, well, keep in mind, remember in 9, he uh, magically found his sisters. It's, I don't know, stored, stowed away for who knows how many years. I would keep if if I had a lightsaber, I would keep it on me most of the time. I just can't imagine a situation where that's not useful. It's useful for everything. It's like a door opener. Every day carry. Every day carry. I never leave the house without it. So so I mean, and not to get too much off of you know the Clone Wars and everything. So the episode uh, seven, eight, eight when um, Skywalker threw his lightsaber <laughs> away. I can imagine how fans were, <laughs> diehards were like, what the heck? <laughs> That's just not supposed to happen, you know? Like, you know, just for him to just disregard it so easily um, was probably just a big shock to, like, you know, the fan base. To me, it was. I mean, and we'll get into that if we uh, if we retouch on those three, but... Um, we, will. we will. I don't think we should. I don't think we should look at those movies ever again. No, <laughs> it, it'll be interesting. It, it won't be as uh, it'll be funny, comical, maybe for everybody out there listening to us. It will be because I mean, episode eight, it's just it's different. You know, I've, I've as, as I've talked to Hitch more, I've grown to it. But, you know, like my it's just my overriding thing was it, it's a separate movie. And I just felt like he had his, his spin on Star Wars. It wasn't like DP is saying the things that were happening in the movie Jedi don't do. It's a fine mm. movie, but it doesn't belong in the middle of that trilogy. It belongs Correct. in between Correct. the That's seven right. and the real eight. It's like seven and a half, just same way, the same right. way. Um, mm-hmm. Its relationship to seven is exactly the same as Rogue One to four. They're the same thing. They're the same thing. And you just have to see right. them that way. But the trilogy is not satisfying, not because episode eight is a failure in itself. It's it's because there is not an episode eight. There is no middle piece to that arc anywhere. It just doesn't exist. All of a sudden, we're at the end. And it isn't satisfying for that reason because it just feels like we got tired. We, we can only make nine of these. <laughs> so what do you want us to do? Right. We used eight. We already used eight. We can't do eight and a half. So this is what you end up with. But, eight, you know, we can litigate eight when we get to it. <laughs> we have plenty yeah, of time to yell yeah. at each other about that. That'll definitely be fun. Yeah. How about, be how, fun about, how about the um, sexual tension between Obi-Wan and yeah. Satine? That was really um, that was a bit of a. Uh, of uh, craziness and everything and how Anakin just kept just needling him. Needle- I love that. You know, he, I mean, that, that shows you like, you know, Anakin's sense of humor and everything, you know, sure. He goes to like the dark side eventually and everything, but, <laughs> but, but he never wastes the opportunity to um, mess with, um, you know, jab. His, um, <laughs> jab Obi. This man is living, so this really- man is living life in a glass house. And just throwing <laughs> stones, just throwing them, just, you know? But now that we know, oh, hold on a second.
All right, so anyway, you can't throw... If you live in a glass house, you can't throw stones. Bottom line, can't do it. And and it's so uh, funny because now that we know these guys can actually... They can have sex, right? So so now the yeah. question of, like, like if Obi-Wan is pretty much aware that Anakin and Padme are, you know, hooking up, is that a, such a big deal? I mean, is it that big a deal? Maybe it isn't. I don't know. You tell me. Only if Yoda finds out. <laughs> but he just doesn't understand human reproduction, right? He just, like, doesn't get it. Yeah. He's like, so no, tell me about how you come out of an egg again. Oh, ew. Uh, egg come out? You do what? When? You did come up then. That is awesome. <laughs> he just makes a bunch of like he just uh, looks like... contraceptive. You <laughs> Yoda, Yoda's so old fashioned, you know. When born, I was chivalry was real. <laughs> like he's. But uh, keep in mind though, when we're talking about sexual relations, um, was it uh, uh, who was it? Ki uh, Ki Adumandi, um he was actually openly having sex because remember he was the last of his um, of his kind. So they did that in order for him to um, keep his species alive. So he was one of the council members that was known to have multiple wives, tons of children for that reason. So I, I don't think the council was was too against it, but. It was something that they forbid, uh, and it's probably to do with the dark side and the attachment, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. why they don't want too many people to get it. Uh, interesting. Word. Yeah. You see what happens. These kids running around everywhere. The Jedi get distracted because they're trying to raise the kids. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Kids yeah. are running with a lightsaber through the house, cutting up things. <laughs> exactly. You Do you have kids? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> Then you know, if you had a lightsaber sitting around the house, what is the one thing your kid's going to do? He's going to take it and run up and down the hall with it. Ice on the wall. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Cutting up the dog in half. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. You with it? I mean. You get you get home from work. I wonder how this guy here, this guy here, this guy here, you know. I know where this came from. Just like, so. honey, what happened to you? <laughs> and she's in like 10 pieces just like. You know yeah. what I mean? Because like you can't give a child a lightsaber, you just can't do it. Don't give a child a lightsaber. Yeah, that's definitely a a PSA there. Um, <laughs> um, what else? Um, Anakin teases. So, so Satine. She she had a um. Oh, the one episode where they the the detective had like the the funny voice. Um, you know, um, going um. Talking with Padme and accusing her of um, uh, she she he around all the it was it was like an episode of one of those like Alfred Hitchcock or something mm -hmm. like that where detective one of those old episodes uh, where yeah. they 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 round up all the suspects and everything and you know um mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty decent um and they they and the uh, the eventual villain or whatever reveals himself and um Padme goes after him right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's when um that's when we were uh, did, uh, we saw our first piece of uh, Bail Organa as yeah. well. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that yeah. was that, that was kind of cool. The foreshadowing of Bail Organa, which you see in the movies as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I thought that was a pretty decent episode too. You know, yeah these 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 batch episodes were pretty decent. Um, uh, we got to see Count Dooku again. You know, pulling his strings and everything with like the the Death Watch creation and everything. Um. Right. It'll be pretty interesting to see how the Death Watch, because they they seem like really bad people, but as we hear in like the Mandalorian, they were just like a certain type, right? You know, right. a certain type of creed. So it'd be really interesting to see how that develops further down the line here. Definitely, and then uh, you know, with this kind of leading into our part three, which is the last piece, which will be um, basically I believe seventeen to twenty two. Yeah. So 17 to 22 will uh, be the end of this um, season two overview of it. But yeah, I mean, we get some some good stuff. Um, I'm pretty sure I think this is where we see um, some more council members come into this. So I think we'll we might see the huts. I'm not 100 sure. Not the huts, but um, I think you'll see Django maybe or Boba, one of the two. But no, yeah, no, I mean, it's no. it's a nice it's it's a good ending. I mean, and. The way they wrote these, you can tell that they were planned to do so many seasons because, I mean, it's just, it's one of those things, it, it just all runs so smooth. And it's, it's another thing, like I said, 
passing it by years ago and then looking at it now, you know, a better appreciation. It's, it's definitely well worked. Well, you know, mid twenties, nobody's famous for being that smart in their mid twenties. So I mean, I certainly wasn't. So there you go. (laughs) I mean, I wasn't, when I missed this, I think I was 25 or 26 when I came out. So yeah, I was playing call of duty and going to the bars. I should have been doing that. Yeah, I mean, either you were a big Star Wars hardcore fan, I guess, or you were just like, um, okay, I'm into Star Wars, but I only like the live stuff. I'm not into trying to watch, like, you know, cartoons and everything, you know. Um, So, I mean, this passed a lot of people by, and I'm seeing now that they really did some good stuff. And I regret having that, because that that was my mindset when this came out. I was like, "Uh, I'm not interested, you know. I, I read... I read some comics, but watching cartoons, if it's not uh, Scooby-Doo and Tom and Jerry, I was like, <laughs> I, I, and I regret having that mindset because this is really good stuff. It's, it's, there's a lot of, a lot of meat to it. And if you give it, give it a chance, um, I think you, it'll really help with your overall understanding of the, the, the galaxy, the universe, the Republic and where things kind of lie and, and the people that make it run also yeah that's a good thing too because i know with um you and hitch um you guys are hardcore star wars fans so this is like fresh material i'm sort of jealous it's you know rad. that you guys <laughs> i'm having a good time you got you, you guys are you guys are getting fresh material for something that you've done you know loved for so long and everything so it's it's, it's decent it's wild to see all of this like yeah. to see how much of this is like uh like if you look at the total amount of hours of star wars produced a lot of it is this this is a huge hunk of that because it's so much it's 11 hours a season seven seasons you know what i mean that's a big portion of what star wars is and so this begs the question this is something that i have been mulling over as we talk about these episodes and we talk about the mandalorian and all the new stuff that's coming out and how it spans a pretty wide you know section of time what is now what is the present in star wars what's the past what's the future and you know the just the amount of content that exists right now makes makes it almost seem like perhaps the clone wars is the present and all the star wars we've known is really in the future it, it's it's an interesting uh metaphysical thing to think about uh but apart from that not very interesting but i just thought i would mention that because it's a it's an interesting way to consider it. well i mean it, it it brings up something that um you know Mitch was talk. T. Mitch was talking about like a while ago and everything, trying to decide whether seven, eight, nine are actually going to be in canon because we're so excited about what's going on with Mandalorian, with what we're what we're seeing in the Clone Wars and everything. It's sort of like to us, like happening right now, even though it's happening in the past. You know, we're just now like catching up on a lot of stuff, um, and everything that happened in like seven, eight, and nine is just you know real sketchy, but it's still there. So technically, it still exists. Um, it well, is what it well, is. Well, if 789 is the future, remember, always in motion is the future. Mm-hmm. There could be a lot of stuff happening. Yeah, you know, uh, and an interesting side note in a good news piece, obviously everybody knows here with um, hopefully us getting on the you know, downward turn of this, um, this pandemic we're in, that it looks like uh, the state of California has loosened their laws up. Uh, theme parks are opening back up, so Great news for Disney IPOs. Great news for us. I mean, that's going to allow movie production to ramp up. I know a lot of people in the Star Wars studios. I mean, this this is going to help. I think everything. You know, Disney's been bleeding money from California, kind of footing the bill for all their parks and all their stuff out there. But that opened them back up, and for them to even make a dollar, that's just good for any Star Wars fan. I mean, you know, there's sets out there. There's movie production stuff. I, I think you're really going to see a lot more of these series, a lot more stuff, a lot more content coming out due to this. California finally kind of opening the doors here over the next couple of weeks. So uh, that's a big news piece I got from, um, you know, the, the Star Wars aspect of a lot more series were on hold. It looks like they're full fledged now. So you're going to get a lot more content faster than we expected. I'm interested to see how they do the economy of these, these series and everything. Usually we think of it like a drama as like an hour long, you know, right. 50, 50, you know, minutes. Um, watching Mandalorian and now watching like the Clone Wars and everything, I see where they get the economy of how to move things along in a series right. and how to pace things. Because these are like 22 episodes, 
Filoni and them are really used to that short type of format. So no wonder, you know, we had such sore episodes of the Mandalorian, you know, they got in there, they got out, you know, I mean, they did a mission, you know, they was right back out and still kept a really good narrative going, you know, for each of those episodes instead of just drawing it out to like an hour, you know, long drama and everything. I mean, if you think about it, and Ken has alluded to this before, kind of like like a video game format. When you do these 22-minute episodes, what it does is it shortens your ability to have plot holes. Because in 22 <laughs> minutes, you can kind of hit everything you want. And if not, mm-hmm. we'll do another episode. Mm-hmm. I mean, they haven't hit us with a dramatic, with the, they haven't hit us with too many one to two parters yet, which I thought you would see, you know, like a one, part one and part two. So mm-hmm. they, they do a great job of keeping your attention span, introducing things, and not leaving too many plot holes. But trying to cover up, I think that's and you know Hitch has alluded to this. I think that's when Filoni, the Filoni verse, and the future of Star Wars will really kind of flourish. Is when we stop filling in holes from before and they let them write their own stuff and move forward. Because yeah. we're still filling in plot holes and yeah. patching up things. Yeah. When they yeah. let them do their job and just yeah. write stuff, right. I think that's when this will really flourish. Yeah, 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 yeah. Proceed for I mean because I mean as of right now the the only thing is that just that um. With the Wonder Woman lady, the 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 director that yeah. did Wonder Woman, she's doing the the next movie and everything, and that's happening in the future. So, is who knows how that's going to go, you know, and who knows if that'll be accepted. If uh, if if this release structure of all these shows is going to feel like the way it feels now, when we've had you know in the last couple months, The Mandalorian has had a new season out. We've had um, you know, WandaVision just ended. We're going to have, you know, Falcon and the Winter Soldier coming up. There's going to be Loki right after that. And when you figure that all of this stuff is going to be happening again in 2022, and there's going to be all the Star Wars shows that have been announced, and who knows what else layered on top of it. I mean, there's just going to be so much content that we'll be we'll be looking at a new Marvel or Star Wars release maybe almost every week for mm-hmm. the next 10 years. <laughs> That's insane to think about, but they're really doing it, hey. right? <laughs> I mean, they're actually it's doing it. Good. <laughs> it's crazy. It's, it's, it's what the fans asked for. Yeah, and I think the pandemic has forced the, the 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 whole entertainment world to change the way they think about how to re- like we talked about. Instead of waiting a year to do a three out two and a half hour movie, they're just they're just putting out these really great, well done, the half hour to forty minute shows. Right. Yeah, it, right. it's to do the schedule is easy, easier to shoot they can they can uh, maintain certain protocols while they're shooting these yeah. things mm-hmm. that you can do with a movie so like it's forced everybody to just think differently about how they do things so there's a lot of things we can thank the pandemic for too yeah Not i much, mean pe- people pe- a, <laughs> i mean i don't know what I, we want to go that all the way that far <laughs> boss <laughs> i mean maybe <laughs> well, well I mean, but the, the, the point the, the, the I, I guess the, the overall point, Ken, is like um people adjust. You know, I mean when yeah. when a bad thing happens, you know, you you you're down for a minute and everything, but you find a way to still persevere and keep going and everything. I mean, that's still the essence of what Star Wars is. Yeah. You're you're going down, you gotta keep moving forward, you gotta you know, just keep it moving. You know, life doesn't stop when a bad thing happens or you know, tragic things happens, life still goes on. Plants still keep growing, you know, rain still keeps coming down and everything, you know, the sky keeps still keeps moving, you know, <laughs> babies still being born <laughs> that know nothing about anything that's yep. going on. You still got to raise them and everything. <laughs> so, um, I mean, just, just, just life just goes on. You just got to keep it moving. It's, it's so full circle of a thing yeah. that Star Wars was created to recreate the Saturday morning serials uh, that George Lucas saw at the movies when he was a kid. And now yeah. in the future, it's going to release once a week. Ladies and gentlemen, Star Wars is a Saturday morning serial, literally. <laughs> so things have come it full circle, dream. right? It was his dream. Yes, yes. George. And that's maybe why it feels like for us now that we are sort of in this rhythm, right? We have, it's almost like a book, we're almost like a book club, right? Uh, it's sort of like a, a book club where we're doing this, this sort of cut of episodes a week. So it's, it's like a steady release, right? Cause we're getting it and, and it's, it's yeah. interesting it's interesting that every week there's a batch and it's almost like having a it's almost like being in school again kind of you know what i mean having a reading list and that's what it's going to be like once this all comes out i mean at a certain point it may almost feel like an obligation that you have to oh another oh man another spider-man <laughs> came out you know what i mean yeah. oh man another 
you know, another Rogue Squadron came out. It's going to be, yeah. uh, man, I'm excited to see what the next couple of years hold. And it's interesting that, like, what these episodes of the Clone Wars are doing, it's pumping me up for this new media that's coming out. It's almost like this oh. is an ad for the new series they're making. It's so cool. It is, yeah. And you know, the wild thing, and we, you know, we kind of alluded to this, and I said this previously, this technology they're using, Disney and Lucasfilm, and F I believe Favreau's studio he works with, who created that giant green screen theory, they could have patented that technology and charged all of Hollywood to do it. And if you watch the Star Wars documentaries, they spoke about it, and they said that we didn't want to charge and copyright this because we wanted this to be the future of the movie film industry. So they literally created that green screen idea or that idea of the, the shots in these small studios with the cameras and the, the moving projection TV televisions to be a free kind of software or hardware for everybody to be able to use moving forward. I mean, I, I think in the back of my mind, you know, how much they could have made on that to further produce, you know, their studios. This is something, George, this was his grand idea. If you watch one of those documentaries that he wanted to do on the Skywalker Ranch, he spoke about building what they built at the Skywalker Ranch where they do a lot of the filming and thinking um, for Star Wars, all, all idea of Star Wars years ago, that it's now, you know, a, a technology that in other studios created, which is it's kind of funny that Disney got Favreau and everybody who had that technology and some brought them on. But it, it's just, it, it's a big, it's a big kudos to them. I mean, I know if it was me, I would have charged. I would have copyrighted it. I mean, it's it's game changing. You see what the Mandalorian looks like. It looks better than half the movies I watch. You know, and they're walking in front of a yeah, their, television makes, screen. And that's only going to get better, yeah, right? Yeah, it makes everything better. I mean, when I first seen, yeah, yeah. I mean, when when people put ideas on top of ideas and everything, and you you sort of advance like the whole like. Um, just the whole, you know, artistry of it. You know, you bring in other ideas. Somebody's going to have another idea to 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 make that even better, which helps yeah. like everyone. So mm -hmm. to keep it to oneself, it's not. It's just. It's just. It's just not good. You know. So yeah. that was a great decision that they made in order to 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 just let it be like a free for all. One thing about this production stuff that's interesting to think about is that you know, let's go back a hundred years in the film industry and think about a movie made in nineteen twenty one. Which would be, which if you watched it, you'd be like, what the heck is this thing? Right? Like, you'd have, it, it's, it seems foreign because it is. It's not anything that we would even recognize. And then flash forward to 1931, and I think that's when that Jimmy Cagney Scarface came out or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, all of a sudden, this is a, like, we can see exactly what this is, right? It's a movie. We understand it. And it's because of sound production and because of, you know, multiple takes and all these, all these advancements that happen in technology in the 20s, right? Because all this money started flowing into Hollywood. So what we have yeah. now is the entire financial structure of the movie industry, the entertainment industry is changing where before there were these intermediary sort of um, uh, institutions like the networks or the movie theaters that would institute themselves between us and the artist, right? And they would all skim a piece and it wasn't so direct, but now it seems like the economy is much more direct. And that means the money is getting directly into the creator's hand. And so they can reinvest it if they want to without having to, you know, without having to lose so much to distribution. So it's, it's an interesting right. paradigm shift for the industry itself. Yeah. And it's all tied into the technology because it's tied into this distribution method and the distribution method is tied into the production. So one can't exist without the other. It's a, it's a neat little system they've set up, but I guess they're sort of going with the old, uh, Milton Hershey system, which is well, you can't get it anywhere else, so you'll pay what we we'll, we'll pay what we tell you. And right. we do, we do. I, I have been much, shutting up. Much. I have been. I mean, I haven't been shutting up, but I've been shutting up about them taking my money for some time, and I can plan to continue to do so. <laughs> I, I as well. They got mine. Yeah. 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 Can't wait to see these last five episodes That's here. Be cool. Definitely. Yeah. So. um yeah, so we'll definitely, we're going to um, come back again for you guys. We'll finish this up with 17 to uh, 22 here. Um, and, and as far as that, I mean, uh, leading out of this week before we get off here real quick, guys, uh, any feedback or any questions uh, that anybody posed in any of our social platforms? Uh, um, I mean, they post like stuff all the time. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I don't really have anything right now. 
Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll try to grab a couple, you know, some some banter or some fun things you guys are putting on there, you know, maybe once a week and, and spare a couple moments and give you guys some shout outs. We do appreciate everybody out there listening, interacting with us um, on any of our platforms. So uh, we do appreciate it. And um, other than that, guys, like I said, we appreciate you tuning in here for us. And we will see you guys next week for the final uh, the season two finale, we'll call it, um, of episode 17 to 22. So other than that, uh, for me and the nerds, uh, this is the way. This, this is the way. Way. way.